Everybody. Welcome to uh, Your Good Life. Ambassador Larry Huggins here in Barcelona, Spain. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for everyone who's watching, listening, hearing, receiving, and achieving the good life that you have for us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. I am in a series that uh, is derived from a manuscript that I've written, soon to be a book, and I've broken this down into, uh, into blogs and podcasts so I can share the information and so I can get some feedback. So if you have any questions, comments, or critiques, make sure and leave them for me in, uh, in the comment section, the chat section, or email me at info at zchurch.life. And who knows, maybe your comments will get into the book, make it a better book. Now, um, the episodes that I've been doing, I'm up to about episode 12, I think, have been about the question, was Jesus homeless? What kind of home did he have? What did he do in his home? And we're going to have one or two more episodes, and then we're going to shift gears and go to a new section of the manuscript and talk about the royal lifestyle of Jesus. Very exciting stuff. So stick with us. If you uh, haven't listened to the previous episodes, I recommend that you go back to number one. And they're all about uh, 10 or 12 minutes long and just uh, just binge watch them so you can catch up. All righty. Today, we're going to be talking about Jesus was accustomed to staying in grand homes. <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, evidently, Jesus was comfortable staying in, in grand homes. So uh, would a vagabond carpenter, you know, some homeless guy walking around with a toolbox in his hand be accustomed to staying in grand homes? Probably not. This idea that Jesus was a homeless carpenter is a very bad idea. You don't buy it, I'm sure. <clears throat> if you've been listening to these, you know I don't buy it. Uh, I've got irrefutable proof, scriptural, biblical proof that Jesus had a big house really big house, and he lived the lifestyle of a king because he was a king. So the fact that Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house is proof that he was operating in kingdom authority. He, he gave him three commandments. Get down, make haste. I must stay at your house today. And so Jesus got what he want, wanted when he wanted it because he was the king. Praise God. It, it wasn't just because... Uh, uh, of divine favor on his life. I mean, I have no doubt that he had lots of favor, but he was he was uh, able to requisition things because he was a king. Praise God. Now, this saying of Jesus demanding that someone open their house to him wasn't just one incident. You know, he, he demanded that Zacchaeus, who was a publican and a chief tax collector, he demanded, he commanded him to make, come down, make haste, I'm going to your house today. He didn't ask him. He told him. Uh, one day, if, I'll have to, if I have time, I'll tell you how I evangelized a little town of Bath, England, just by inviting myself into people's homes to eat. <laughs> yeah, I invited myself. No one turned me down. Praise God. Why would you want to turn me down? Praise the Lord. Anyway, uh, here's what Jesus said to his disciples. And, and this was a standard operating procedure. He said uh, unto them, whatsoever town or uh, city you shall enter into. And in Luke, it says that he sent them to every town and village that he would later go to himself. So he said, whatever, whatever city or town you enter into, inquire who is worthy and there abide till you go thence. All right, find out who's a big shot. Find out who's important in this village or this town. Uh, someone who's worthy, that means has weight. We might, we might say something like this. That center, senator has a lot of weight in Washington, D.C. Do you understand the meaning of that? If a person has weight, then they have influence. 
possibly wealth and power. And that's where Jesus commanded his disciples to go. He said, go to the household that has the most juice, (laughs) the most authority, the most wealth, the most influence. And um, that's where you're going to stay until you're done with the kingdom business there. Wow, what a bold thing, huh? So um, Jesus always sent his disciples to worthy houses, and he sent them to places that he himself would later come. So it, it makes sense that if the disciples stayed in a certain home in a certain town or village, that Jesus would stay in that home in that town or village when he later uh, went to visit that town or village. Come on, think with me. Uh, Jesus ordered his disciples, and here's what he told him to do. He said, I'm commissioning you to be my representatives of my kingdom. So uh, you go in and requisition the best household of each city to be your base of operations while you're there. And actually, he, he told his disciples, he said, if they don't receive you, uh, then shake the dust off your feet because I don't have any place in my kingdom. Pretty powerful stuff. This is how King Jesus operated. He had a big staff of people. He sent out his 70 disciples. He sent them to all the villages and towns that he would go to. And he told them to stay in the very best houses, the very best houses. He didn't say sleep under the stars or, or go to a hostel or, you know, take a tent with you. He didn't tell them any of those things. He said, go to the very best houses. It's king to business. Now, uh, this is what was going on there. And I'll, uh, I'll wind this down right here. Jesus, as the king, was exercising eminent domain. Remember, the earth and fullness there belong to God. So God has a right to requisition or commandeer anything he wants to. And this is called the right of eminent domain. And any head of state has the authority to commandeer houses and lands for official state business. Now, uh, the official resident residence of the, of the president of the United States is, got it, the White House, easy one, right? But if he were to go to Camp David, then Camp David would be the seat of the the executive part of the government. Or if he went to his personal uh, residence, then that personal residence would automatically become the seat of the executive part of the government. Just like the airplanes, you know, uh, Marine One, the helicopter, Air Force One, the jet airplane. Uh, if, if, If the president went into a civilian aircraft, the designation would change to civilian one. The presence of the chief of state in that home or in that airplane makes it the nexus or the center of the executive part of the government. So Jesus was actually sending people out to do kingdom business, and he was uh, exercising eminent domain. There wasn't any question. Uh, They were expected to do it. They were expected to open their homes. He told his disciples, don't even take your own purses and your own money. Uh, You enjoy their hospitality. They are commanded to take care of you. And so they went there and they lived rent-free for as long as uh, they were in that town. Uh, They were sustained by that household. That's why he sent them to rich people so it wouldn't put a burden on anyone. And they conducted their kingdom business from that place. Now, I've operated sort of like this uh, in my missionary ministry for many, many years. I send out representatives to different cities that I'm going to go to, and they arrange my crusades and my meetings, and they, they get support. They get people interested. They get the pastors involved. They organize the meetings, and I come in and preach. So this was uh, similar to the pattern that Jesus did. He, he sent people out to take care of kingdom business, and then later he went. So he would uh, he would requisition the land or the house. He would commandeer it. Uh, the Queen of England can do that. Uh, King Felipe of Spain can do that, uh, I think. <laughs> uh, you know, the world is changing, and, uh, and not everyone recognizes the authority of a king. Sometimes the kings are just ceremonial. But uh, some have real power. The Queen of England has real power. And if she wants something, she gets it. 
And even Prince Charles, if he were to if he were to go out and take a, a walk on the Thames, and here's a big luxury yacht there, and he stepped aboard, uh, then they would they would do whatever he asked them to do. If he said push out, to, let's go on a little cruise here, they would do it. Who would tell Prince Charles no? Who would tell the Queen of England no? Who would tell the President of the United States no? Okay, stop right there. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people would, but. Uh, who would, uh, who would tell Jesus? No, nobody, praise God. And so it's, here's the point I want you to get and I'll close. He sent his disciples only to the best houses. Does this sound like the way a poor vagabond carpenter would operate? No, this is a king who's doing kingdom business and he's, he requisitions only the best houses. Now, Jesus was, uh, he, he was rugged. He was tough. He was a man's man. He slept under the stars. He slept in a boat. Uh, you know, he, he uh, wasn't a softy. But every time he had an opportunity, he went to a great home, a grand home, and that's where he lodged, like Zacchaeus. He went to Zacchaeus' house. I, I hope you're seeing this, and I hope you see how important it is, because uh, when we are conducting kingdom business, then we have a certain level of authority. And we can demand, command, and expect certain things to happen. You need to raise your sights a little bit. And, and don't always try to uh, stay in the cheapest, most rundown place you can. Um, believe God and, and, and raise your sights a little bit. Now, I've uh, personally, I've stayed in all kinds of places. I've slept on the ground. I've slept on hardwood floors with no mattress or blanket, uh, floors with cracks in them and no heaters. I've slept on rope cots. I've slept in boats. I've slept on airplanes. I've slept uh, all kinds of places, but I've also slept in some of the nicest uh, five-star hotels uh, that you can go to, praise God. And not just because I want to live extravagant. It's uh, when you're doing kingdom business, you need to be refreshed so that your strength will be up and, um, and you can you know, meet the demands that are put on you physically, mentally, and emotionally. And besides that, um, we, need to, we need to get used to some luxuries because heaven is luxurious and you're not gonna find any Motel 6 there. You're not gonna find any, any um, you know, five cent hamburger joints or whatever. Uh, you're going to find out that everything about heaven is, is extravagant and luxurious. So get used to it. Jesus did. Praise the Lord. I've, I've got a lot more I could say, but I'll save it for the next episode. God bless you. Come visit us at Z Church uh, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Just go to zchurch.life. You can also, and that's at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. And you can also be with us live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. I sometimes. The most beautiful things can be so simple.